Corals are colonial animals, with each polyp sort of acting like its own animal. In fact, no matter how large that colony is, in the wild it all starts from a single polyp. In reality though, like most things, it's not that simple. Corals can move nutrients and things between polyps via a complex system of cavities, currents, and mucus which moves across their surface and inside their tissues. Just under the surface of a coral is actually a complex network of cavities and canals lined with cells that have tiny little hairs which stick out. They're called ciliated cells. Those cells wave their tiny little hair around, and that's called the cilia, and that in turn moves fluid through those canals between polyps and all across the surface of the coral. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and today we will be talking about the invisible conveyor belts of mucus that cover our corals both inside and out. There is an incredible paper all about this that was recently published titled Surface Flow for Colonial Integration in Reef Building Corals, and it was published in Current Biology in June of 2022. It's open access, and the link is down below if you want to check it out. I would recommend it. It's a great read and full of absolutely incredible imagery. All right, mucus. We know it. We may not love it, but mucus is used for feeding, it's used to grow microbes that benefit the coral. It's even used in defense and even just to flush the surface of the colony clean from dirt and sand that might collect. Corals are able to create water currents moving in complex networks across their surfaces, allowing them to move food that's trapped in mucus over to their mouths and just to sweep debris away towards the edges of the colony. Some corals create a lot of mucus as soon as they're disturbed. I'm sure those of you with Acropora are familiar with this. It's secreted from each and every polyp on the coral, and in some corals it's produced in volume and can even drip off the colony when it's out of the water. It does serve a purpose though, and it's not just to be gross. Mucus helps trap food during feeding, and even assists in the surface flow of water around the colony. You can distinctly see this when the team applies the fluorescent beads in this video. See on the left, in the low mucus area, how the polyp boundaries are clearly outlined versus the right with more mucus? This coral produces so much mucus that it's not even possible to see the surface flow until later when you can see the polyps bringing in their mucus, containing all of those little fluorescent particles back into their mouths. Corals do not produce mucus consistently across their entire surface. And different corals keep mucus around for different reasons and different times. Some corals clear their mucus within minutes, while others, like Montipora foliosa here, maintain high mucus levels for more than 30 minutes. This gives the coral a much greater chance at capturing food. It sticks around in the mucus longer. So why would this be? What purpose could some corals have for just making so much mucus? Well, some corals, like those that we just saw, use it to trap food before pulling it all into their mouths. Others use water currents and mucus along their surfaces to form vortices above their polyps. You can sort of see that here, where there is a concentration of beads over each polyp on this coral and a network of moving currents between the polyps. Contrast that to the dead coral on the other side, where the beads don't even spread out on the surface of the coral. Acropora actually do both of these, like you can see in their Acropora muricata video here, taken from the Great Barrier Reef. In order to avoid microplastic contamination, they used charcoal instead of those fluorescent plastic beads, but you can clearly see the charcoal stuck in the Acropora's mucus and the charcoal being transported over time into the mouths of the polyps. Think about this the next time that you're feeding your acropora. Don't just you know, blast them with so much food and water that you'd remove all their surface mucus. They'll get a lot more food if you let the mucus do its thing. In the second part of the video, you can see the particles actually being tracked. See how each polyp is collecting particles from around it, but not from further out on the colony? In fact, each polyp sort of competes for its own food, trying to grab particles from as far away from itself as possible using mucus and water currents to move it all towards its mouth. 
After finding this behavior in an Acropora on the Great Barrier Reef, the team reproduced that very same test in several corals kept in reef tanks. It's really interesting to see these videos with the particles tracked so that we can see the complex currents that are generated on the surfaces of the corals. You can see how the particles travel along the surface of the coral and in some concentrate near the polyps themselves. You can see that there are clearly defined surface currents being generated. Several particles are tracking along the same curved path over time and throughout the videos that were taken. Now, imagine that that's your coral's food. This might not be exactly why so many of our pumps have feeding modes. I think that those feeding modes are more there to prevent your food from going through your overflow and just getting caught in your filter sock. But those feeding modes also slow down the water in the tank. And that lets those surface currents on the coral actually move food around however the coral would want. And the end result of all this is that more polyps get more food when you feed your corals with reduced water flow in the tank. Multiple polyps actually work together to form these currents, and no single polyp can do it all on their own. The flow patterns created in the water are actually specific to each species of coral, and that's something that I think is actually pretty cool. You know, maybe, maybe we could use this to help identify species in the hobby one day. Maybe, you know, through AI or something like that. It would be easy enough to squirt some maybe tiny food particles on a coral, and then just compare the patterns that are produced on its surface to some I don't know, library of patterns that we've collected online. You could do it all on your phone using just machine learning. And perhaps you know, that could go into some AI thing in the cloud that identifies the patterns in the flow and maybe some other visual cues from the coral and gives you a species. These surface currents are produced by tiny hairy, and that's called ciliated cells, on the surface of the coral. We know this because the currents that are produced on a specific coral are stable over time, over hours, or even over weeks. If this was not something that was produced by the coral itself, you know, maybe it's an interaction of just water flow over the geometry of the coral, well, then we'd expect that to be different depending on the particular ocean currents at the time of the test. In reality, the flow is stable in direction and speed, over a range of water conditions that they tested. A single coral also produces multiple currents that don't always intersect. Those currents link some polyps in the colony together into a larger region of polyps that work together to distribute food particles amongst themselves. The speed of the water flow seems to be controlled by the nervous system of the coral. The team was able to affect the speed of those particles and the particle transport in the currents by adding neurotransmitters like adrenaline or serotonin to the water. Serotonin actually produced the greatest max speed, but it didn't change the overall pattern of the flow on the coral. So this means that the direction and patterns of flow on a coral are likely set during its growth. You know, those, those ciliated cells all point in whatever direction they're going to point in, um, you know, but the overall health of the coral and its nervous system can change the speed at which those cells kind of beat their little cilia, their little hairs, um, which are actually what is moving the water in these flows. When partially exposed to air in the lab, corals use their surface currents to move water to the exposed parts of the coral, a behavior which may allow corals growing high on a reef to survive being exposed during the lowest tides. This is actually pretty common on some reefs, particularly in the Indo-Pacific region and in our aquariums sometimes when we're doing water changes. In the video here, the coral is underwater on the left and in the air on the right bottom. You can see how the beads are slowly being transported from the water towards the exposed section on the right of the screen, um, and in the same way that they're transported when the entire colony is underwater. This is something that probably warrants further study. I mean, can a partially submerged colony keep its entire exposed surface wet like this? It might be able to. It would be interesting to explore the limits of this though. I mean, how far up can a coral really keep wet doing this? 
Of course, it's not just on the surface of a coral that water is moving around. We don't see it in our reef tanks, but coral colonies also have a very complex system of tunnels just under their skin, serving as a gastrovascular system. You can see this here in this CT scan of a Stylophora pistillata. The gastrovascular system is shown in blue, while each individual polyp's gastric cavity is in yellow. The gastrovascular system in our corals is actually quite extensive. This system's walls are very rich in the symbiotic algae that coral gets so much of its food from. The movement of fluid around this cavity not only moves food around, but also oxygen and other dissolved chemicals that are needed by the algae living inside the coral. It might also provide a mechanism for the coral to use in transporting those algal cells around after part of the colony bleaches. This system transports fluids all over the coral very effectively. You can clearly see the transport of the beads after having been injected into the polyp's gastric cavities. This is how nutrients and fluids are moved around the entire colony of a coral. The flow is actually bi-directional as well, so no single polyp is going to get left out of this transport network simply by being at the start of the system, or being the oldest polyp in the colony. That's not to say that the polyps are all entirely altruistic. Particles actually have a good chance of staying in the system near the polyp that actually ingested them, and that gives that polyp a greater chance at using the nutrients contained in that particle. And then if it's not used or maybe not needed, then it can eventually be transported elsewhere in the coral for use by other polyps. Chemical signals can also be passed around this way. Think about things like uh, sending a signal that there's a predator. You know, all the polyps in an Acropora colony, they just seem to close up seemingly all at once when you disturb one area. That signal may be sent chemically via this network of interior channels. Now, it doesn't seem to matter if a coral is growing wild on a coral reef or in captivity in our reef tanks. Both exhibited these distinct flow patterns and they're distinct per species of coral. As the coral grows over time, the ciliated cells that actually produce these currents grow in patterns that are stable for that species. We see this in some of our corals as ridges and valleys on the surface of the coral. But on others like a smooth skin deepwater acropora, the surface current is definitely still there, if not invisible to our eyes. Each and every polyp on our coral has a little dedicated territory on the surface of the coral surrounding it from which it alone feeds. We saw that in the videos showing mucus being pulled in. There's no competition between coral polyps except at the outer edges of their territories. I think that the currents produced on the surfaces of our corals, you know, they cannot possibly be all that strong. And so strong flow from powerheads or even strong currents in the wild might very well outcompete it. Because of that, I would recommend taking advantage of feeding modes that many of our DC return and flow pumps have. This would give your coral the chance to funnel food more effectively using its mucus and those little currents, even if we don't see it doing so on, its, on its, our own eyes. The mucus even forms something akin to a conveyor belt, just bringing food to the waiting mouths of the coral. Take a moment to subscribe if you enjoyed this content. I try to post about once a week or so. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and what sort of stuff that you would like to see in the future, and I'll watch for papers on those topics. Stay safe out there with all these viruses going around. <laughs> Be kind to each other and have a fantastic day. Bye.